time again, I think, after the 60s, a little wedding period, for people to start speaking up again and shocking people. I want to shock people that are listening to this. I want to make you think. I want to get you arguing among yourselves in your own living room the way you used to do in the 60s. I want the kids to be arguing with their grown-ups. Avoid adult, terminal adulthood, young people who are watching this. Don't grow up like your parents. Argue about it. Let's get some sparks and electricity going again because they're all a little too laid back. It's time to, uh, it's a great American tradition of speaking up and challenging and stirring things up because no change takes place in the brain unless there's shock. There's some sort of a electrical explosion that shakes you up a little. <laughs> it's not going to hurt you either. To hear a different point of view is not going to bring down the... <laughs> the walls of the Mormon temple or the <laughs> local churches. <laughs> LSD is one of the most important discoveries uh, that the human being ever made. It's the key to changing your own brain. Now, that's perhaps one out of a thousand, maybe one out of 10,000 people who are mature enough and self-confident enough uh, to be able to use this. Particularly back in the 60s, at the height of the Judeo-Christian empire, when we were s sending good Christians over to Vietnam and so forth, LSD was uh, a very powerful revolutionary uh, device, giving people control of their own brains. But um, uh, I've never advocated it. It's, you can't advocate the telescope. You can't advocate the, mi the microscope. You can't advocate uh, uh, nuclear fusion. Before the 1960s, there was no notion of pleasure. You uh, worked five days a week, six days a week, and on Saturday nights you were allowed to get drunk and bump up and down your wife for reproductive purposes, maybe. There was no notion of pleasure. Pleasure was something that was owned by the priests and the, the big guys in the sky. Well, um, you know, for every little pleasure, there's a pain, pain, pain. That's what they taught us back then. Well, now pleasure is our number one business. Don't tell me that nothing happened in the 60s. The 60s have taken over. By pleasure, I mean self-indulgence, self-actualizing, recreation, recreational vehicles, going and coming where you want to, private airplanes, water beds, all this new sensuality, the new emphasis on uh, aesthetics. The key to religion, the key to find God, is intelligence. It's not obedience. It's not submission. It's not falling on your knees. What's wrong with you falling on your knees? Do you think, do you worship a God that wants you on your knees like slaves? The new religions are going to glorify intelligence because God wants us to be intelligent because the smarter we are, the more we'll understand her handiwork and the glories of uh, the uh, galaxies that she's built. So definitely the, <coughs> the new religion is going to be a religion of intelligence. If, you're, if you increase your intelligence, you're sexier. If you increase your intelligence, <clears throat> you're more romantic. If you increase your intelligence, um, you're more religious because obviously the smarter you are, the more you want to know exactly who did it, who created us, and how she wants us to evolve. A third of the people that listen to this uh, broadcast are going to think it over and are going to take some steps in, uh, in self-actualization, throwing out the two or three thousand year old heritage of submission and fear and guilt and sin and devil and all that nonsense, which is designed to keep you stupid and to keep you frightened. <laughs> a cult is simply a small version of what in larger uh, extent becomes the sacred holy cow. Christianity was a cult. One time there were 12 kind of hippy-dippy fishermen following Christ. Was it a cult then? The Roman, uh, the Roman Empire and the Jewish uh, Sanhedrin thought Christianity was a cult. Now, anyone that invites you to follow a leader is asking you to submit, to go on your knees. Don't follow any leaders. Uh, cults, if you mean by cult, a, uh, a religious group following a charismatic leader giving money and obedience and submission, well, I'm totally opposed to that. I hate followers. I've never had any followers. But what I've done throughout my history, anytime someone wants to follow me, I do everything possible to alienate them. When the vegetarians come around, I eat meat. <laughs> when, the, <laughs> when the Buddhists come around, we open up champagne, with, don't we, Barbara? When the, <laughs> when the druggies come around, we tell them they're taking too much drugs. Leave us alone. <laughs> we don't want followers around. Death is through. Death is the final stupidity. The, uh, death is the only enemy of life. And within five or ten years, <clears throat> if we gave the emotional and the political and the economic backing, our scientists, would give us a pill that would wipe out death. Are you ready for that? The interesting thing is that 
a lot of American people want to die. And if you tell them, you don't have to die, they get mad. I've given lectures and say, you know, you don't have to die. And people say, what do you mean? You can't say that. That's what life's all about, death. Yeah, that's what they told you in the old Bibles. But it, that's no longer an option. If you want to die, go ahead. We're not going to pass laws to put you in jail if you want to die. We'll give you wonderful, wonderful, glorious ceremonial funerals. But uh, the option is there. If you don't want to die, you don't have to walk blindfolded backward into the the future that the Judeo-Christian religion gives you of death. You can live as long as you want in these bodies. <laughs>